Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. This week's video will be straying a little further from the norm than usual, as I'll be fully building and reviewing a working five-cylinder radial engine made by the company Tech King and supplied to the channel free of charge by Moyo Store. Featuring more than 230 individual parts, this kit features everything that you would expect to see on a real radial engine. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the box, or the tin I should say. Before we get into the contents, I'd just like to put out the disclaimer that despite getting the kit for free, I was not told what to do or say, so as a result, every opinion in this video is my own and everything has been written in my own words. Upon opening the box, you are immediately greeted with the instruction booklet. It's nicely made and just the right size for squeezing in the right information as well as not taking up too much space on the desktop. Then it's onto the components themselves. They've all been nicely packed in this sort of grey foam material, which means there is no chance of damage occurring, especially combined with the metal tin that they come in. This was a very nice touch indeed. Along with the parts, you also get this mini toolkit featuring two Allen keys along with a mini screwdriver. Looking at the components themselves in more detail, they seem to be really nicely made for the most part. There were a few casting defects here and there on the cylinder heads, though these aren't too prevalent and won't pose as serious issues later on down the line. The kit also features a full set of electronics, allowing the air screw to spin once assembled. This was a really nice addition. I started the build off by first applying some grease to the moving elements of the push rods. This was an essential step laid out by the instructions as a build up of friction could stop the engine from working once powered on. A good amount should be applied here though not overboard. The push rods themselves could then be assembled. This wasn't a difficult process at all and soon enough I had five fully completed components, fully lubricated and ready to be installed. I'd just like to take this moment to give a quick mention to my channel members here on YouTube. The support they give is absolutely invaluable to the channel and it is massively appreciated. If you'd like to find out more about what a channel member entails, feel free to hit the join button down below for more info. Many thanks again. Anyway, back to the video. With the push rods assembled, it was time to move on to both the crankcase and crankshaft assemblies. Just as a disclaimer, I apologise in advance for misnaming any components seen in this build. I'm by no means a radial engine expert, so please correct me in the comments if anything comes up. This was a bit of a fiddly process overall, but it worked out alright in the end with a bit of balancing. It was then on to installing the push rods into the crankcase, which was also a bit of a fiddly process as they kept wanting to fall out, though I managed to hold them in long enough to install the covering element that held them all in place. The smaller Allen key was used for this. Assembling the rear cover for the crankcase was a much easier process than the previous ones and it provided a nice breather in general. This was also the point at which the motor and motor cover were both installed, which would be used to drive the engine. It was a bit of a squeeze but not too bad at all. After installing a few more cogs and gears, the rear crankcase cover could be fixed into place using four mini bolts tightened with the smaller Allen key.
I then assembled this cam gear assembly that would be placed towards the front of the crankcase, just before the front crankcase cover was installed. I believe the purpose of this element is to induce motion in the ejector rods, though correct me if I'm wrong about this. The crankcase cover itself was very easy to install, with only two bearings having to be pushed in before it could be bolted on in the same fashion as with the rear cover. At this point, the nice bronze air screw could be fixed in place with a single finger tightened bolt, securing it tightly. Now onto the pistons themselves. This construction process began with the rocker arm assemblies, which would soon be integrated into the piston heads later on. These featured some of the only plastic parts in the kit, though this was understandable as they would be fairly hard to mould out of metal. The completed piston head assemblies were then fixed into the pistons themselves, once again with four mini bolts, making use of the small allen key. Fixing the pistons to the main crankcase was a very satisfying process, as the push rods could finally be located into a fixed path of movement, rather than flopping all over the place. In order to fix the pistons onto the crankcase, you guessed it, four mini bolts were used for each of the five elements. The rocker arm ejector rods were a bit of a squeeze to get in, though this meant that their fit once located was optimal. Now onto the final finishing touches. This included fixing the base to the bottom of the engine, in which the electronics could all be connected up and stored. Some of the connections used on the circuit board were very similar to one another, so it was essential to follow the instructions closely at this stage. and with the circuit elements all tucked away, the model was complete. I have to say, for such a different project to my usual kind, I very much enjoyed the build of this kit. It was a nice breather from some of the more intense projects I had on the go, as well as being incredibly educational and insightful into how a radial engine really works. I found it very interesting to see how all the parts fitted together and worked with one another, which is something you don't often get to see in much detail with generic plastic kits. Despite some of the parts requiring a bit of a squeeze to get into place, the quality of the kit overall was very impressive and definitely commendable. Thank you once again to Moyu Store for supplying this kit free of charge. In the description below there will be a link that will allow you to purchase the kit if you wish, whilst also supporting the channel, so this is highly appreciated. You can also use the code MW12 at checkout for a 12% discount exclusive to the channel. Well, that's it for today. Please feel free to leave a comment with your opinions of the kit, I'd love to hear what you think. Also, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed and a dislike if you didn't, and I hope to see you all in the next one. See you soon. Bye.